Hi, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ. In this lesson, how to kick. All right, so in this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know to be able to throw a decent kick. Specifically, using the three most important kicks in order of priority, which are the round kick, the front push kick, and the side kick. And if you're a coach or an instructor, you can discover the exact steps to be able to take a complete beginner from not being able to kick to be able to create damage with these kicks. Now on this channel, Effective Martial Arts, and in our school, we teach one curriculum for striking, wrestling, and grappling. So everything you need to know to be able to defend yourself in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So if you haven't already, subscribe right now because we're really excited about all the powerful content we've got coming your way and we are just getting started. And make sure to watch this video till the end because we're gonna cover all the common mistakes that beginners do. And we've taught these techniques to hundreds of beginners and it's always the same mistakes that come back over and over again. So we've developed a series of powerful drills to correct these mistakes and make sure we're able to deliver those kicks correctly for best results. Now, before we delve into more detail for the round kick, front push kick, and side kick, a couple important considerations about kicking. So first off, why kicking? What's the advantage of kicks? Well, the first one is reach. By definition, you have usually longer reach with your leg than with your arms. So you enter kicking range before punching range. You can strike from further away. That's the first advantage. The second major advantage of kicking is that you can develop more power with your kicks for the simple reason that you're using big muscles in your body. So the quads, the glutes, the calves, the hip muscles. So big muscles in your body that you can use to generate a lot of force. You're also using typically more potent weapons. So in the case of the round kick, you're hitting with the shin bone here, which is a big bone in your body. In the case of the side kick, you're hitting with the bottom of the heel. Again, very solid. In the case of the front push kick, you're hitting with the ball of the foot, which you walk on all day. So these are solid parts of your body that you can use to create a lot of damage on your opponent or on your targets. So those are the advantages of kicking, reach and power. Now, there are, by definition also, some disadvantages and risks that you're taking when you are kicking. So the first disadvantage is that it's usually harder to be precise by hitting your target with kicks, although you can train that with practice. The other major risk that you are taking when you're throwing a kick is that you're compromising your base on the ground. So when you're kicking, by definition, you have one of your legs in the air, so whereas you normally have two points of contact with the ground, now you have only one. So you're taking the risk of falling. And you see this in professional fights all the time. You can throw a kick here and lose your footing, and then you are vulnerable in that instance while you get back up. The person, if you're dealing with somebody who knows what they're doing, they can also catch your kicks. And if they're a good wrestler, they can take you down to the ground or they can counter with a strike. So that's another risk you're taking. They can even take you down with a simple sweep as well if your leg is in the air. So you're taking a risk of compromising your base when you are kicking. You need to be conscious of that when you begin your practice of kicking. Now, in terms of prerequisites, the first thing you should be comfortable with before studying kicking should be your fighting stance. So check out that video in the cards above. So we go into detail about the fighting stance, a lot of cool variations and drills to make sure you're comfortable on your feet. Uh, long story short, from, to make a quick recap, feet wide, knees bent, chin down. That's what you always wanna be mindful of in your fighting stance. And you really wanna minimize the time that you are out of position when you are delivering strikes. So. If you haven't already, I recommend you watch this video right now and come back to this one after. And the other thing you should develop simultaneously or closely related to your kicks is your punching arsenal as well. So check out that video as well, cards above and description below on how to punch. Naturally, depending on your body type, hip flexibility, balance, agility, and so on, you will gravitate more towards kicks or punches. But as an effective martial artist, you at the very least need to have a strong basic arsenal of kicks as well as punches to be an effective striker. So all that being said, without further ado, let's look at those three kicks in more detail. All right, so the first most important kick you should study when you begin your martial arts training should be the round kick, here. And specifically, you should start by hitting low first. Now, as we said, the round kick, your weapon will be the shin, and specifically the lower part of your shin, and your target can be multiple. You can hit, the outside of the calf here, the outside of the thigh, the inside of the thigh, the groin, if you angle it slightly upwards and you want to be dirty in a self-defense context or whatnot. You can hit also the ribs and the face on either side. 
Typically, you want to be stay away from the rib region here on the lead side because it's easier for your opponent to catch your kick in this case, although it's not a hard rule. Now, for every round kick, there are five steps and they go as follows. Number one, load. So you want to put some weight on the leg that you're going to be kicking with. So load, two, step. And you want to be stepping a little bit forward and a little bit to the side, so 45 degrees this way. And that can vary depending on the position of your target. Maybe you go more forward or more sideways. But as a general practice, when you're starting, 45 degrees here. So load, step. Number three is swing. This is important to understand what we're doing with the round kick. You are throwing your leg at the target. So using your push off the ground and your body to generate momentum and swinging your leg at the target to create damage. It's kind of like throwing a baseball, okay? Swinging a baseball here, uh, a baseball bat. So you want to be swinging here with your whole body so everything moves and the bat moves last. Same thing with the leg. Here, load, step, swing, and when you reach maximum extension, you can't turn any further, you should feel a pull here in your abdominal region and your hip flexor, and that pulls on your leg. So that will make it more uh, natural to throw then the leg, and you have more power in your kick that way. So here, load, step, swing with the upper body here, and then lift here. The leg starts leaving the ground, and at mid-range here, this is an important part here, the pivot with the hips. So you wanna pop the hips, pivot on your bottom foot, here, pop the hips into it, and recover is set number five. So usually, uh, beginners struggle mostly with step number four, which is the pivot on the bottom foot and the hip pop. So we're gonna cover a drill in more detail on how to do it. Real quick, first, the five steps again. One, load. Two, step. Three, swing. Swing. Four, whip and five, recover. Now you can either recover with a 360, bend the legs and soften your stance here to catch the ground with your feet, or you can recover with a 180, bring your knee up and come back to your stance. When you're hitting a target, naturally you're gonna bounce off the target and come right back to your stance. In either case, you want your recovery to be quick because remember, you are vulnerable to having your leg caught when you're kicking, so you really wanna create that damage and come right back to your stance quickly. Now, the sticking point for most beginners is really that hip pop at mid-range. So developing that pivot on the bottom foot and hip pop here. So this is the drill you want to do. You want to have your hips facing forward, your guard up, toes pointing relatively forward here, and you want to pivot so that our heel points forward and our hips are sideways now, looking at the target, and the arm is thrown in the opposite direction. So you just want to repeat that drill here, hip pop drill. Don't forget to breathe, here. Now, when you are kicking low, it's important. You don't need to necessarily do that full range of motion every time. Sometimes you just do a quick kick. You just kind of throw the leg here. You don't even need to pivot. You see this done also in professional fights. Sometimes you want to go more for speed rather than power, depending on what the situation calls for. But again, for beginners, really want to have that ability to generate maximum power in each one of those kicks. And for the round kick, it really comes from turning the hips into it generating momentum with your body and taking a step in that direction. All those steps can be minimized. Loading phase, step can be foregone, uh, the whip on the hips here, so you could do just a real quick kick here if speed is your main objective for that kick. But again, you wanna be able to create a lot of power. So again, five steps, one, load, two, step, three, swing, upper body, four, whip, and five, recover. So I'm gonna do it, eventually those steps kind of blend into each other. Obviously you're not gonna do it stopping every time. So doing step by step, one, two, three, four, and five. A little bit faster, one, two, three, four, and five. And again, that's gonna be your low round kick. Now a couple variations for the round kick. You can also do it with the lead leg. In that case, you typically need to switch your stance. A little bit more advanced, so don't worry, uh, stick with the basic variation if you're just beginning, but just switching your stance. Both feet step at the same time. Here, boom, and then we repeat the process. Swing, whip, and recover. Here, switch kick, boom. You can even do it with your foot relatively the same place. You just kind of move your hips and boom, going to your round kick. So, a couple considerations. Then you need to be able to kick also higher, Although for beginners, it's not a priority, and you will need to hold this position. That's how you're gonna get your kicks higher. Being able to keep your leg in the air and constantly trying to go a little bit higher. You can even pull on your pant here to create a little bit more height with your kick. So that's a drill you should do if you wanna increase the height of your kicks. But again, high kicks are not 
an absolute necessity. They're a good tool to have, but you can get away. You can be a good fighter without being able to kick the head. So if you want to kick higher, same, same technique. Here, going for the body, boom, or even going for the face, here. In the case of the head kick, it's even more important to do the pivot here, because that's gonna help you reach higher with your kick. All right, so that's the round kick. Low should be your priority, middle, high, or other options as well. Next, the front push kick. So you should definitely be comfortable with the round kick first. It's more important and more commonly used, but the front push kick is a nice addition to your arsenal as well, specifically because it comes in a different direction and it's a good distance management tool. You can kick and push the person away with your lead leg or back leg. So as we said, the weapon that you're using in this case is the ball of your foot here at full extension. And you can also do the heel, so here, Sparta kick variation, which is not wrong, so another variation, you have a little bit more power, but a little bit less reach, so we'll get into that in a future video. But essentially, the classic front push kick, you are pointing your foot, here, so pointing your foot, pointing your foot, and pulling your toes up. So you're really hitting with the ball of your foot, here, which you step on. So front push kick, your weapon is the ball of the foot, primary weapon, and your primary target will be the body over here. If you have the choice, the plexus region right here, like we saw in the punching video, will be kind of the soft spot to hit on an opponent's body. That can cut their wind out. So here, here right below the rib cage, at the top of the ab region where it's soft. But it's also not wrong to hit just the belly region or the abs if your goal is just to kick the person away. So, like we said, you can do it with the lead leg, or you could do it with the back leg. And in this case, there are only three steps to the front push kick. It's relatively simple. So first step, number one, is getting your knee up. You wanna get your knee all the way up to your chest. Again, each one of those steps can be minimized if you're going more for speed, but we want our beginners to be able to develop the maximum amount of power if they have the opportunity to do so. So, step number one, knee up, here, to the chest. At the same time as you bring your knee up, you want to bring your toes up. So flexing your foot here, pointing your toes up, and then your foot will travel in a straight line towards the target, putting your hips into it as well for maximum reach and power, throwing this arm down and this one will protect the face here, and then re-chambering and coming back. So step number one, knee up, step and foot up at the same time. Step number two, extension of the leg and the hips at the same time. Here, step number three, retract, and then recover your stance. Okay, you can do that with the lead leg or the back leg. Same drill, here, knee up, knee up, knee up to the chest, full extension, hips into it, retract, rechamber, and then come back to your stance. Sometimes retract and come back with this leg in front, depending on the impact and where you wind up after your kick. So, those are the three steps of the front push kick. Now. In terms of drills, common mistakes is people don't get the knee up high enough. So again, it's not wrong. Sometimes you could just get the knee up a little bit and just do more of a kind of snapping kick motion. But for maximum power, you really want to get that knee up to your chest. So a very important drill is the knee up drill for the front push kick. For this one, very simple. We're just going to try to knee ourselves in the chest. Here. So you're going to try to kick yourself in the chest with your knee. Here, with either leg. And if you can touch, here, here, over the back leg, here, 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 knee up drill. And from there, you just use that rebound to go into your kick. So that movement will create a stretch in your glute muscle, which will add potential power to your kick. So here, knee up and extension, and come back. Boom, knee up and extension. Here, and come back. Notice the foot goes in a straight line forward. Here. Okay, so that's the front push kick to the body. Very important, knee up drill. The other drill, especially if you want to increase the accuracy and eventually the height of your kick as well, is to do like the round kick, held up kick, here. So using here, bring your leg up as high as it can be in the front kick position and working your balance at the same time. You can use a wall if necessary to hold your balance. You can even hold your leg up with your pant leg or with a towel or something and make sure that you're forcing upwards with your leg when you do so. So you don't want it to be doing all the work with your hand. You want your hip flexor to be doing some of the work. So here, so you can 
eventually not hold it with your hand and still maintain good elevation in your front kick position. This is an important drill for each one of the kicks, holding your leg up in the final position of your kick so you develop that strength in those hips. Okay, so body is your primary target. The other target is potentially hitting to the face. So you can hit the face with a front push kick and this will just change your angle. So you're here going knee up and then you're gonna go boom, a little bit higher. This is gonna be a little bit faster. So here, boom. This is also known as the snap kick. Going high up to the face. Here, boom. Here, a little bit higher with your front push kick. But again, when you're just starting, body is fine. You're gonna get good results if you're able to push somebody away with your front push kick. And the last basic kick that you should study as a developing martial artist should definitely be the side kick. And the reason we teach that one last is because it takes a little bit more practice to develop proficiency in that movement. It requires a lot of strength and conditioning and kind of molding your hips into that position for the side kick. The other reason as well is that you can pretty much create a lot of the same directionality of force with the front push kick than with the side kick. They both come down the center line and the side kick requires a little bit more practice. That being said, the side kick has the potential to create a lot more power than your front push kick. And you can create a lot of damage with a good side kick. Because here you're really engaging all the glutes here, the thigh, it's basically like a squat, right? So you got all the power going into it. The reason it takes more practice is because it's a movement that's not as natural uh, than the front push kick or even than the round kick. You need to develop that dexterity in the feet and in the hips. So the steps are uh, similar. Uh, the weapon is your heel here. So you really wanna be connecting with your heel and you have a little bit more versatility in terms of targets. You can hit the knee here, so low side kick here, a little bit above it on the thigh of the lead leg. So this is something you can reach relatively easily from far away. You can kick to the body as well here, horizontal, and you can kick if you can have the flexibility to the face as well. So those are your main targets using your weapon of your heel. An alternate weapon also is like the blade of your foot as well, which is not wrong. There's certain variations you can do with that as well. But primary target, a weapon, will be the heel. Now, in terms of the side kick, how to develop it? The steps are the same than the front push kick. So there's three steps, but your hips will be in a sideways position. So typically you're gonna be in a bladed stance before you throw a side kick. And this one, you're gonna torque really primarily with the lead leg. So here, kicking with the lead leg. If you wanna kick with the back leg, it's gonna be a little bit awkward to bring that back leg forward and then forward here because you're doing opposite directions with your hips. You can do so by doing kind of a side step and then going with the back leg over here, that works. But the easiest way to hit with the back leg in terms of the side kick will be to step around here and do the turning side kick from here. So we're not gonna get into that in a lot of detail, we'll cover that in a future video. But for now, if you've mastered the previous kicks, focus on the lead leg for the side kick. Now, the three steps are the same. One, knee up, here. Two, extension. Three, chamber and recover. So, the best way to practice that at first, the sticking point for most people is that the heel does not travel in a straight line towards the target. And usually the shin is not in line with the target either. So those are the common mistakes for the side kick. So here, if I'm hitting this way, I wanna have my feet in line with my imaginary target. I wanna bring my knee up here. And then depending on where you're hitting, if I'm hitting low, I want my shin to be aiming low. So it's going in a straight line towards the target. If I'm hitting a little bit higher, I'm gonna align my knee with my foot and I'm hitting horizontal here. And if I wanna kick high, I'm gonna bring my knee lower than my foot so that I can kick high like this and my shin is always pointing towards the target. The other aspect as well is hip and heel alignment. So if you see from here, I want in this position my heel to be in line with my hip here. So shin pointing where I wanna go and heel in line with the hip. So that way it travels in a straight line. It's like there's a track leaning towards the target like so and then recover. Common mistake is people start from here, and if you do a side kick like this, you're diluting the force this way. Okay, so you really wanna have your heel pointing towards the target and going in a straight line like so. 
Now, a good drill is to do like I just did, the slow leg extension drill. So having your foot up over here, heel pointing towards the target, extend and bring back, and try to keep your heel, your heel in line with your hip the whole time. Here and here. Do that, a couple reps, until you feel a good burn in the side of the body, the side of the hip, like so. If you could do it with no hand on the wall, that's even better. So that's the first most important hit drill to understand the directionality of force. The second important drill is the same as we did previously with the front push kick, which is the knee up drill. So in this case, I'm just kneeing myself in the chest. Here, here. And at the same time, lifting my foot up. Here. If I want to go higher, I'm lifting my foot higher. Here. So just knee up, knee up. Sideways here, feet are in line with the target. Knee up. Flexing the foot. Pointing the heel towards the target. When you're comfortable with that, you just chain it through with the side kick. So here, knee up and extend. Again, using the rebound of your knee on your chest and the elasticity of the glute to add more power to your kick. Here, here. The other important thing here is at full extension, you wanna add a little bit of a hip pop. So here, knee up, knee up, extend, and then hip. You go into it a little bit. A cue to make sure you're doing it right is at full extension, you want your toes to be lower than your heel, like so. If you're kicking like this, this is an incorrect side kick position. You will have suboptimal results in this position. You won't generate that much power, and it's harder to recover from. So, full extension, boom. Here, looking from the corner of your eye at your target, like so. Okay, so, slow leg extensions, final position, knee up drill are the steps to develop a decent side kick. When you're able to do so, you can also do a step. So here, replacing one foot with the other. So that's kind of a chasing side kick to cover more distance. You can even step behind here to cover even more distance. Here, which actually makes it more powerful. And you can do the turning side kick by stepping across here, looking over your shoulder, and kicking like so. Again, the recovery, depending on if you go forward, go back to your stance, that'll change depending on the circumstances. And there you have it guys, those are the three basic kicks. In order of priority, really focus on the round kick and specifically the low round kick to start, to aim for the legs. Uh, when you're comfortable with that, you can kick a little bit higher, aiming for the ribs and eventually the face. And then you got your front push kick, primary target will be the belly and try to reach the plexus right here. Again, if you have the flexibility, you can reach for the face, specifically the chin or the nose as well as the side kick, which also comes down the center line with potentially more power, and you're hitting with the heel. Again, your target can be the knee or the thigh, the body, or even the face, if you can manage to get there. Now, for each one of those kicks, you definitely want to be able to hold the final position so that your hips and your muscle memory remembers the details of the position so you can throw a decent kick. Uh, in terms of the round kick, the main drill that we're going to do is the hip pop drill where you're going side to side, uh, pivoting on the bottom foot. In terms of the uh, front push kick and side kick, slow leg extensions will be your primary drill, also final position, as well as the knee up drill, so kneeing yourself in the chest to develop that flexibility in the hips and using the elastic power of your hips and glute muscles to add power to your kicks. Now before we wrap this up, a couple further considerations. Now that you will be comfortable with developing power in those basic kicks, once you practice, which you should, the next step for you will be to start doing setups and combinations. So typically you're gonna set up your kicks with punches or vice versa. Start with a kick, follow up with a punch. So there's a lot of different things you can do from there, mixing your punches with your kicks. And as an effective martial artist, you also want to be blending your striking with your wrestling. So you can even use kicks, uh, either person throwing kicks at you to go into takedowns or using your kicks as setups for your takedowns as well. And then once you hit the ground, it's all into the grappling range for which there are a myriad of techniques that you need to know as well. So check out those other videos on our channel for basic wrestling and grappling techniques because you definitely wanna be comfortable in all those ranges. Fighting doesn't just happen on the feet, it also happens in the clinch where you're tied up with your opponent on the feet and when you're on the ground, either on top or bottom position, which is what we call grappling. 
Now in closing, let us know in the comments what part of this video was new to you. So uh, whether you have experience or not, even if you're a coach or an instructor, is there any part of this video that you did not know in terms of those three basic kicks? Uh, if there's a specific drill that you didn't know or a specific uh, pointer that you find useful, please leave it in the comments below and that'll help us know what is useful to you and hopefully we can tailor much more quality content for you guys moving forward. So, as always, it was a real pleasure uh, making this video for you guys. Hope you've enjoyed. Signing off, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Pointe Claire, West Island of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thank you very much for watching. Practice well.